good morning today's class is on environment and health learning outcomes are the classify biomedical waste explain the methods of management of hazardous clinical and non clinical waste describe the various methods of waste disposal in dental clinics what is environment so the word environment is derived from the french word environ measures which means surrounding so our surrounding includes biotic factors like human beings plants animals microbes and abiotic factors such as light air water i think you will be knowing what is the difference between biotic and abiotic biotic means the living factors abiotic means they are non living but they will help for the living beings and it can be classified into external and internal environment external means the environment surrounding the organism from the outside that involve physical social chemical and biological conditions encompassing the living organism then what is internal environment internal environment is nothing but the internal body conditions that need to be controlled included like temperature water concentration blood sugar content carbon dioxide level these are controlled to offer a constant inside environment and that is called homeostasis so components of environment there are mainly three components that is physical biological social under physical like water air soil housing waste radiation etc under biological plant and animal life including bacteria viruses insects rodents and animals social is like customs culture habits income occupation and religion most of the time we will neglect the social factor but that is the one nowadays which is causing ill health in our people the key to man's health lies largely in his environment i don't know whether you will agree with this statement or not but you have to agree because if environment is not good definitely it will affect on our health in fact much of the men's ill health can be traced to address the environmental factors such as water pollution soil pollution air pollution and poor housing conditions the purpose of environmental health is to create and maintain ecological conditions that will promote health and thus prevailing diseases one of the essential public health care element is safe drinking water and sanitation this too should be must and should in any public health issues so what is health if i ask what is health for you you may tell it's a complete physical mental and social well being to get that three we should have other things too like nutritious food help us to stay healthy regular exercise helps keep us strong and healthy then accessible to medical care see we are medical professionals we know how to access the health care but people who are staying in the rural area they don't know how to access that's what we have to create awareness where are the health care resources available and what treatment will be there in the primary health center level or in the district hospitals or in the super specialty hospitals that's what we have to tell the people so coming to environmental health we already spoke like the external environment are air food water sunlight noise and soil then the good things around us is like good like the property of air how you can tell it's good means it should contain the limited amount of carbon dioxide and more in oxygen then nutritious food then medicine and vitamins then beautiful sceneries to look at then family and friends these are some of the good things around us then hazardous things like bacteria virus the recently the covid 19 then harmful chemicals tobacco smoke stress loud noises definitely these are some of the hazardous things around us then come to environmental health carriers like uh, people working in the field of environmental health actually we think environmental studies don't have any scope but that is the one which is which will be having more scope in the future 
then workforce for corporation making sure workplaces are safe for the workers then work as a scientist in research labs then work for the government writing regulations and studying the population these are some of the environmental related health careers so biomedical waste management see if we want to keep our environment clean then we have to take care of waste management we can't throw our waste somewhere like where people are moving in the streets if you are throwing our waste then it definitely it will pollute our environment either air pollution or water or soil but some there will be some pollutions biomedical waste management it's nothing but disposal of waste arising from a healthcare establishment can have an effect on like the health and human well-being then the environment then issues relating to public safety the safe management of clinical waste is essential for the community and environmental health it is also important that irrespective of the technologies used for the treatment and disposal of the waste the standard of protection of environment and human health are uniform across all the healthcare establishment the percentage of waste or type per total waste in public health care centers this data i have taken from who this data is quite old maybe you can expect uh, um, the accurate data from the ministry of health okay i will go back to the the data which i have taken from who which was in 2005 according to that the type of waste like non infectious type constitute about 80% then pathological waste uh, it will constitute around 15% then sharp waste 1% chemical or pharmaceutical waste 3% then pressurized cylinders or broken thermometers it will uh, carries around less than 1% but the most important is non infectious type in the future slides i will explain you what is that uh, non infectious waste that was the one which is having 80% quality which we are going to produce from our healthcare as a waste so according to who they have classified the waste into some eight uh, categories in that the first is general waste the general waste which it will cause it won't cause any severe health problem to the people or it won't cause any environmental pollution much but you can expect but not much in pathological waste it will definitely cause environmental pollutions like human tissue or fluid body parts which are uh, surgically extracted tooth something like that which will cause pathological waste if you are disposing improperly then definitely it will cause environmental pollution then sharps like needles scalpels knives blades etc then infectious waste which may transmit bacterial viral or parasitic disease to human being then we suspect to contain pathogen like from the laboratories and culture like from microbiology histopathological waste so that we should dispose in proper way then the chemical waste from the laboratories whatever we use that will cause the pollutions or the environmental problem then the radioactive waste example unused liquid from radiotherapy or lab research or contaminated one pharmaceutical waste like glass waste or chemicals then pressurized content uh, container which which is like oxygen cylinder our aerosols so that are some of the things which will cause ill health then xenotoxic waste waste containing cytotoxic drugs often used in cancer therapy these are some of the categories like some nine categories who has classified and these are some of the examples but in your exam we may ask give some example for genotoxic waste which are causing environmental problem so you should be able to answer what are that genotoxic waste this is just an example we may ask anything in this mind so sources of biomedical waste uh, so biomedical waste can be generated in government hospital private hospital nursing homes physician office and dentist office mortuaries blood bank so these are some of the sources of waste generation unit then the next question is what is regulated waste 
and what is non-regulated waste. If I ask you people like what is regulation, that, that means some rules which are imposed on collection or disposing. So this waste you have to collect with some regulations, following some regulations and you have to dispose according to some regulations. So that are like biological waste, like saturated waste material that are saturated with blood, saliva and, and can express blood in that and saliva, body fluid when squeezed out. So these are regulated waste. You have to follow some particular criteria to dispose this. And soft tissue like oral soft tissue including biopsies, specimens and hard tissues, bone and teeth as shown in the picture. Come to another regulated waste like disposal of shards like needles. If some other person, if you are not disposing properly, then if some other person who is not knowing what is that, if that needle or the syringe accidentally, if he got um, pierced with that, then the infection will transmit to him. So we should follow some regulation while disposing the waste which are sharps. So the environmental hazards, chemicals and metals like mercury in our amalgam, then beryllium, these are some of the chemicals which we are not supposed to put outside and we have to dispose in proper regulation with proper regulation. So non-regulated waste, till now we have spoken about uh, regulated waste, now we can uh, learn about what is uh, non-regulated waste. The non-regulated cotton uh, waste are like paper towels, gauze, non-sharp single-use disposal devices. Anyway, this disposal devices means we are going to dispose without using. Then disposable syringe, plastic disposable PPEs, personal protection equipment and other animate surface barriers. See, one thing is, these are most of the uh, things are disposable, so we have put it under non-regulated waste. But sometimes people due to their, uh, I don't know what to tell, they want to make money, they can again they will sterilize and sometimes they will uh, give it back for the use, but that not should be done. Management and clinical waste disposal in Malaysia is followed according to like clinical waste. Clinical waste is defined as the waste arising from the healthcare procedures which um, by nature of its potential infectious, toxic or dangerous content may prove to be hazardous unless rendered safe and inoffensive. So consists wholly or partly of human or animal tissue, blood or other body fluids, excretions, drugs or other pharmaceutical products, swabs or dressings, needles or other sharp instruments. General waste is all other waste and includes waste from offices, corridors, public areas like whatever the waste paper we are throwing out. So these are some of the general waste. I think you can see this symbol. This symbol is nothing but biohazard symbol. Uh, like in your OSPI, we can put this picture and we can ask what is this symbol, can you uh, name the symbol, what it indicates, something like that. So we should know the symbol. So golden rules to minimize the waste generation. First is paper waste, you can go for online or digital things. Then cardboards, plastic containers should be recycled and, and disposed in black plastic bags. This general waste should be disposed in black plastic bags. You can see in our level 21, you can see and uh, in our clinics there will be three colors, bags. Anyway, we are going to speak about that in the next slides. Uh, minimize plastic waste by using refillable bottles for disinfecting or cleaning products and reusable devices for dental procedures where feasible. Because we can't use uh, all the materials which are recyclable then avoid containers or packaging made of pvc plastic this material is difficult to recycle and can produce acid gases if incinerated as a part of your waste treatment stop using plastic bottles for drinking water like biomedical waste you have to segregate it like infectious waste under that also like uh, your gas piece will go to some 
other uh, waste disposable thing and your shards will go to some other bags and that bag should be color coded for example color coding for segregation of biomedical waste for example yellow color this will always contain human and animal anatomical waste then microbiological waste then soil cotton dressing etc how you can treat this yellow color bag waste you can incinerate or deep burials come to red one the red color bag should always contain or you should dispose these things only in the red color bag like tubing catheters iv sets then treatment includes autoclaving microwaving chemical treatment see red color we are we should use only for disposing the tubing catheters iv sets and the treatment for this is like after collecting we should dispose properly that is regulated regulated waste because we can dispose in autoclaving microwaving or chemical treatment come to blue or white in this blue or white bags you can dispose the waste shards needles syringes scalpels blades how you can treat this we can treat by autoclaving microwaving chemical treatment or shredding come to black color bag this contains discarded medicine cytotoxic drugs incineration ash then chemical waste how this black can be disposed means uh, disposed in a secure landfill because these are general waste so you can put it into like we can dig some oil sorry soil and you can fill with this uh, black cover things the next is labeling labeling before transportation is very much necessary you have to label according to these settings like waste category whether it is uh, infectious waste or regulated waste you have to mention what type of waste it is then waste class waste description which month you have collected year date of generation then uh, from which place you have taken then sender's name like phone number contact person then receiver's phone number contacts in case of emergency whom to contact this are some of the uh, labelings you have to put before transporting the waste so these are the things and this is how we have to take the waste like you should not keep it in openly it should be closed in the second picture this is the one second picture this is the wrong one you have to take up like this only it should be covered and there should be a symbol and the person who is taking this he should be proper use of ppe here where the proper treatment for the waste they will done and they will dispose according to some regulated ways so biomedical waste collection and transport biomedical waste shall not be mixed with other waste such as municipal waste segregate the biomedical waste in separate containers at point of generation biomedical waste that are to be transported must be securely packed and labeled that's what we spoke in our uh, previous slide then transportation of biomedical waste is allowed only in vehicles authorized by prescribed authority a day to day record of quantity under the different categories of biomedical waste generation in premises must be maintained a biomedical waste collection and transport no untreated biomedical waste shall be kept stored behind 48 hours you may think sometime the worker may be absent or he is on leave then how it should be if for any reason the biomedical waste is required to be stored behind this time limit the authorized person must seek a permission from prescribed authority and take adequate measures to ensure that waste does not affect the human life and environment adversely these are the precautions we have to make it like in case if you are unable to transport the biomedical waste to the corresponding authority or the people so comparison of treatment technologies so some of the treatments like incineration autoclaving microwaving then chemical disinfection plasma pyrolysis if i ask you people which will be the better one 
should find out the answer because if everything if i'm telling then you won't go back and search in any book i know you people go to google and you will google but still you have to search in the books to find out the correct answer if you go and search something in the book you will find you will be able to find some other things also that's what in your pbl we used to teach so uh, coming to the table the uh, operating cost of incineration is high autoclave is moderate microwave is too high then chemical disinfection is low then plasma pyrolysis is high suitability of the waste like for the incineration not for radioactive waste we can for the radioactive waste you can't use incineration and for all except pathological waste you can use autoclave all except cytotoxic radioactive waste you can use uh, microwave then liquid waste you can use chemical disinfect like in endo you can use uh, sodium hypochlorite for treat, uh, like for cleaning your uh, um, files then easy of operation incineration is quite difficult autoclaving is easy microwaving is easy chemical disinfection is also quite easy plasma pyrolysis is not that easy it's difficult waste volume reduction in the incineration definitely when it is born the significant reduction in the waste volume but autoclaving there won't be a uh, decrease in the volume microwave at certain extent it, uh, extent it will be decreased chemical disinfectant nothing will be done like it's just a disinfectant of the surface area then plasma pyrolysis definitely the significant reduction in the volume can be seen then odor problems in the incineration yes there will be autoclaving slight microwave slight odor problems chemical disinfectant definitely slight will be there plasma pyrolysis nothing will be there everything will be like ashes then environmental friendly incineration is not that friendly chemical disinfection is also not that friendly only friendly is autoclaving microwaving and plasma pyrolysis so coming to autoclave i think you might have studied this in your microbiology like what temperature you have to eat at what time what is the pressure so under the principles this autoclaving will run you should know how to test the autoclaving which bacteria to use to test this what is thermopolis bacteria everything you should know then biomedical plast plastic waste disinfection by sodium hypochlorite this is the machine where you can put the waste and it can be disinfected through sodium hypochlorite mm, then biomedical waste destruction by double chambered incineration then double chambered incineration is like first chamber uh, it will destroy most of the things for example here it will destroy most of the things but some things which will fly to the second chamber they like for example here 80% destruction has occurred but some particles which needs higher temperature they will be in like ashes and it will go to this chamber here the complete uh burning of the things will happen and ultimately the carbon dioxide will come out so this is double chamber the first chamber like assume that 70% will be work will be done here then the remaining 30 so total 100% uh, waste disposal can be done through this method so incinerator disposal this is like specific things you have to follow like you have to construct you have to dig the soil you have to construct there will be specification what is the weight length depth and all and what is this brick width everything you have to follow and whether you have to put some concrete in the inside surface of the uh, pit or not or in the ground whether you have to use the concrete or not some specifications are there according to that specifications you have to dig the pit in on that only you have to put the uh, waste so this is what i'm i was telling like uh, for, uh, mm, the pit should be contains 50 cm surface the hole is filled with the soil this is on the top then there should be minimum of uh, around 10 meters difference between the people walking place and the pit and there should be earth mound to keep surface wa water outfit pit so that's there should be some elevation here so that water won't seepage into the pit 
and here this is very important uh, here you are going to fill the waste incinerated waste again upon that you have to put the layer of soil again you are putting the waste again the layer of soil again the waste but the top layer sheet of wire mesh embedded in top fill then security fence here so that either animals or the human beings should enter it and uh, they should not alter the waste so other biomedical waste treatment options like hydroclave hydro means water clave means something which can like the water which is used to sterilize then gas sterilizer you can use your bunsen burner in the blue flame then other biomedical waste treatment options microwave irradiation i think you might have seen in our clinics you will be keeping the blue light uh, microwave irradiation nowadays it's most common in all the clinics then plasma pyrolysis this is quite expensive but it's good for some of the uh, waste liquid infectious medical waste your sodium hypochlorite is the one like for example liquid infectious medical waste that is uh, the content of suction canisters may be disposed as follows placed directly in biohazard waste autoclaved and poured down a sanitary sewer solidifies using approved disinfectant solidifier and discarded in the solid waste then shards shards must be collected at the point of generation in a leak proof and puncture resistant container the containers must bear the international biohazard symbol and appropriate wording container should never be completely filled nor filled above the full line indicated on box sharp encapsulation see this is the picture where if you put the sharps here definitely the waste of sharp will be here here there will be some equipments which can break the sharps into pieces so it's mutilate and destroy i'm um, sorry mutilate and destroy then disinfect using see whatever waste you are generating here you have to disinfect or else if you throw this definitely it will cause either of that pollution water air soil or directly if it comes in contact with the human being then the infection can spread to the human being so you have to disinfect before you dispose then you have to dispose in short pit that's what we discussed in our previous slide then seal the pit and start disposal in new pit we should not use the same pit for the other thing because we already filled that one so at least for few years we have to close down this pit then waste sharps and syringe destructions we have seen in our oral surgery where the waste destruction of the needle is done and how to dispose means whatever the waste is generated in the needle destroyer you have to sterilize it or you have to autoclave it then only you have to dispose or else the infection you are just allowing to um, like infection you are allowing to cause to some other person for example for our small camps you can use this sharp pit you just dig a soil and open then at the end of the camp you can put all the waste into the pit and you can close it so biomedical waste management in dental clinic this is very important so management of mercury containing waste where all you can find the mercury hmm, in amalgam so stored unused elemental mercury in tightly sealed break resistant container make sure the container is labeled hazardous waste and scrap like scrap amalgam mix only as much as amalgam as immediately required using pre measured amalgam capsules manually remove large pieces of amalgam produced when removing old fillings empty the amalgam capsule are hazardous and should not be disposed in the garbage this is very important because it's our human tendency to dispose whatever you will get during the removing of the old restoration what we will tell uh, patient to spit into the spittoon but the right procedure is the bigger one you have to collect it and you have to throw or dispose in regulated manner because that contains mercury 
then use disposable suction tips and dental units use gloves mask and glasses when cleaning suction traps then contact a certified waste carrier for recycling or disposables do not dispose scrap amalgam in the garbage do not wash scrap amalgam down the drain then do not place scrap amalgam in the shops container or waste do not rinse the traps and filters in the sink as amalgam particles will discharge into the sewer do not place extracted teeth with amalgam filling in the regular garbage it should be disposed of in the shards in the scrap amalgam container to avoid incineration come to silver containing waste this pen fixer solution contain approximately 4000 mg of silver per liter and it's hazardous too so should not be simply rinsed down the drain so what we can do to dispose this the management of silver containing waste is label the silver container properly because we sometimes we may think this is some other solution so we can use for other treatment so better it's you have to label it then once container is full contact a certified waste carrier for recycling or disposable before recycling the best procedure is to to desilverize the fixer solution can be mixed with developer and water and dispose of down the sewer or septic system this is the best practicable way to dispose the silver containing waste spent developer is permitted to be discharged into the sewer or septic system provided it is diluted with water utilize a digital x-ray unit to minimize the need for fixer solution this you can do like using the digital x-ray but it's quite expensive the sensors of uh, digital x-rays are very expensive so if you are having a clinic you can follow the method you just mix the fix mix uh, mix the developer and fixer with the water then you can put it into septic system management of undeveloped film undeveloped film contains a high level of silver and must be treated as a hazardous waste silver can contaminate the soil and groundwater if it is sent to a landfill unused film should be recycled rather than being placed into the waste collect any unused film that you will be disposing and place it in a container recommended by the disposal company or plastic alginate container is sufficient do not place a silver recovery unit cartridge in the garbage use a digital x-ray unit to minimize purchase of new x-ray film this is quite expensive develop film has little residual silver and can be placed in the regular solid waste stream do not throw undeveloped film into the regular garbage coming to lead file like after expo like radiograph you, most of the time we used to throw the red for a lead file so how to dispose that i don't know in our classification where the lead foil stands it should be regulated waste only because lead is poisonous the lead foil inside each x-ray pocket is leachable toxin and can contaminate the soil and groundwater in landfill sites lead foil packets should never be thrown in the regular garbage this material must be either recycled or treated as hazardous waste so these are the handling pictures of clinical waste first is a low back how to open this is the cover which where you are throwing the waste this is the disposable uh, suction tips then how to wrap the cover and see the person who is wrapping is wearing all the pp then every time it should be in closed chamber only you should not uh, like open like this and after at the end you have to take uh, pack it like this then you have to transport it to the regulated person or the prescribed person thank you